Okay, uh, let's continue our discussion. So, uh, in the previous uh, video, we discussed the, some introductory concepts on the, data, the, the services and the functions of data link layer. And we said that the data link layer is divided into two sub-layers. You have the data link control sub-layer and the media access control sub-layer. Now, we said that the data link control sub-layer, the main function is uh, uh, it addresses the common issues or functions for both point-to-point uh, -point and broadcast links. And uh, the functions, among the functions of the data link control sub-layer is our framing, uh, flow, and error control. Now these services are actually implemented in uh, software, basically part of the device drivers. Okay, for uh, the purpose is for smooth and reliable transmission of frames between nodes. Now let's start with let's start with framing. Uh, the idea of framing is uh, recall that in the physical layer, the physical layer doesn't care about uh, the interpretation of the bits. At the physical layer, when it receives, uh, remember that the physical layer is the lowest layer. When it receives uh, a set of bits from the data link layer, which is the layer above. The, the physical layer, it simply encodes that bits into the bits into appropriate signals that can be transmitted over the transmission link or the transmission media. Okay. Now, uh, in the data link layer, uh, there should be a mechanism to be able to provide some interpretation or a grouping or an, an, an interpretation of a grouping of uh, the frames, and since in the data link uh, layer there are two types of links we have point to point and broadcast links there should also be a mechanism to be able to spec specify uh, the destination and the source of a frame especially if you have a a multi-point or broadcast link so that's why uh, in a frame you have a sender address and a destination address to be able to separate that this is uh, this frame came from this source and this is distinct to this source the destination address tells where the frame is to go and the sender address helps the recipient to acknowledge the receipt of that uh, that frame now you might be uh, asking now uh, how large should the frame be okay. how large should it be All right. now uh, there is a trade-off uh, in terms of the size of the frame. If the size of the frame is too large and during the transmission of the frame, there uh, an error occurs in the frame. If the frame is too large, then the frame has to be retransmitted again. And I th that will be inefficient because if you have a very large frame and you have to send it back again with only one bit in error, then that you're not making use of the bandwidth or the capacity of the link uh, efficiently. Okay. Now, uh, regarding the sizes of the frame, how do you determine the size of the frame? There are two types. You have a fixed size framing and a variable size uh, framing. In a fixed size framing, uh, you have a fixed size in terms of the size of the frame. Let's say uh, 12 bytes. Okay. If you have a fixed size frame, there is no need to define the boundaries of the frame. The receiver can just extract from the link, let's say, 12 bytes, and the receiver will treat that as a frame. Then the receiver again will extract uh, 12 bytes from the link, and then that will be treated as a frame for fixed size framing. For variable size framing, you have to define the end of the frame and the beginning of the next frame. So this is where some uh, problems might occur. Okay, so uh, most networks usually use a uh, variable size framing because sometimes you don't know the, the the amount of data that will be coming from the network layer. Remember that the data link layer is sandwiched between the network layer and the physical layer. Okay, so <clears throat> there are two types of variable uh, of uh, variable size framing. Uh, character oriented and bit oriented now in character oriented you have uh, the data coming from the or the frames uh, uh, 
uh, are treated as a sequence of 8-bit characters, uh, typically ASCII characters. And uh, the data or the frame is marked, since this is a variable size frame, is marked by uh, flag, flag bytes, okay, flag byte, actually flag byte, to uh, mark the uh, start and end of uh, a frame. And for example, in this frame, there is also a header and a trailer. The header uh, contains some uh, metadata and the trailer contains some probably error checking uh, values. And all of these are multiples of 8 bits. That's why it's called uh, character oriented. Okay. So as you can see here, you have the flag which, start, which marks the start and end of a frame. You have the header in the trailer. And this is the data, the variable number of characters that came from the network layer. Now, uh, a problem will occur here if, for example, part of the data from the upper, upper layer contains the flag. Now, for example, if this, uh, this byte here is the same as the flag used to delimit the start and end of a frame, then there will be a misinterpretation. So what will happen is the receiver might think that the frame ends here if this flag occurs from the data occurs in the data from the upper layer. So that's why they have this called uh, byte stuffing, which prevents data from being interpreted as a flag. And to do this, uh, a special character, escape character, is used to indicate that uh, the flag occurring in uh, the data field or in, in the data part of the frame is, should not be treated as a flag, but rather as part of the data. So this is an illustration of that. So this is the data from the upper layer and uh, from the network layer, and part of the data has a flag and the escape character. So when the data link uh, layer receives this data, it will have to be encapsulated in a frame by adding the corresponding header and trailer. So what the data link layer does uh, using byte stuffing is if it encounters a flag in the data, it will add an escape character before that data. So let's say like this, escape flag. And then this one, this is an escape character, you'll have also have escape escape. So the frame that will be created at the data link layer will appear like this. Okay. So this flag here will no longer be treated as a delimiter for the start and end of a frame, but rather it's part of the data because the receiver will uh, the receiver will encounter ah this is escape this is an escape character that means this is part of the data and this is what happens now so the receiver will interpret this as part of the data and remove the uh, the, the escape flag and get the actual data which is the same as the data that came from the network layer on the sender side now for the bit-oriented protocols, you have a sequence of bits. So uh, normally, during the old days, most transmission in the data link layer occurs in the form of characters, 8-bit characters, or 1-byte. However, with the, the modern networks, wherein the data is no longer just plain text, data can uh, uh, travel in the, uh, data can be graphic, uh, graphic data, audio data, or video data. Uh, it's quite difficult to represent them using characters. So instead, you have uh, bits uh, to represent these types of data. So this illustration shows here that the data from the upper layers, uh, again, this is a variable size frame. So you have a variable number of bits which can represent audio, video, okay, whatever, uh, graphic data, for example. and uh, the markers for the start and frame, the start of the frame or the end of the frame, is also a bit pattern as, as shown here. So again, the same problem will happen in uh, the same hap problem with uh, the uh, byte-oriented protocol with this uh, bit-oriented protocol. So the flag, the flag uh, bit pattern here, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, can actually occur in the data from the upper layer. So in order to prevent the, uh, the 
uh, misinterpretation of this bit pattern as flag what is done in the bit stuffing is you add one extra zero whenever five consecutive ones follow a zero in the data so you have uh, one example here this is the data from the upper layer so what it does is to uh, insert a zero after a five bit uh, one two three four five then insert a zero so that uh, this bit pattern will not be misinterpreted as a flag which marks the start and end of the frame so there are extra uh, in this illustration you have extra two bits added and at the receiver end you'll have uh, the unstub uh, bit pattern data from the network layer from the sender side so that's how it's done okay uh, the next one uh, so Two functions of the data link control sublayer. You have uh, framing, and the next one uh, is flow and error control. So, flow and error control. Flow control coordinates the amount of data that can be sent before receiving an acknowledgement. So, in a typical transmission, you have a limit. Uh, the receiver should not be overwhelmed with too much data because normally, if the receiver cannot uh, process the frame, uh, the frame will have to be discarded because there's usually they have a limited buffer in in the receiver end so when a frame is uh, received it will be placed in a buffer and if the buffer is full then that frame will be discarded and uh, error control uh, function of the data link control sub layer uh, is both for error detection and error correction as discussed in the previous chapter and uh, <coughs> Anytime uh, an error is detected during an exchange of frames, uh, usually the specified frames are retransmitted. We call that uh, automatic uh, repeat request. So in the next videos, we're going to talk about the different protocols for uh, flow and error control. Okay, so we have two categories for noiseless channel and for uh, noisy channel. And that will be all for, for this video.